boys and girls. Let's have some fun and draw together. Maybe even your family would like to join in. Anyone is really welcome in your household. Today's project is recommended for fourth grade. We will be drawing hummingbirds today. All you will need is a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, and hopefully some wonderful colorful crayons, colored pencils, whatever you have at home to color it in. And hopefully you guys have been observing lots of hummingbirds um, since you've been home. I certainly have. So you see how colorful they are and um, the uh, flowers that they choose to go into or maybe you have a hummingbird feeder. So we are going to get started on our hummingbirds today. Let's start with our shapes. I'm going to use a marker so you can see better. Remember to hold on to your paper with one hand, draw with the other hand. The first shape is a circle. Anywhere on your paper, you can use a scrap piece of paper also. Next shape is a dot. It's a circle, but we color it all the way in, so we call it a dot. The next, do you remember the name of this line? Very good, boys and girls. Horizontal. Can we all say that together? Horizontal line. Next line, you remember that one? Vertical. Very good. Vertical line. Very good. We have one more line. Remember the name of that one? Diagonal. Very good, boys and girls. Let's say it together. Diagonal line. Okay. Then we have our half circles. A U. An upside down U. Looks like a rainbow. A C and a backward C. All of these are half circles. If we put them together, it would make a full circle. Then we have our angled lines, which are V's. A regular V, an upside down V, which looks like an A without the crossbar, a sideways V, and another sideways V. Very good. Then we have a slightly curved line. Remember, it is not as, as curved as our upside down U or rainbow, it's not as straight as our straight line. That's why we call it a slightly curved line. Then we have our lazy S. Our lazy S laying down or horizontally, we call a hill and a valley. And then we've been doing spirals lately, which is just fun. So remember, you start in the middle. It looks like you're going to do a circle, but you go past that point and just keep going around. I remember they make wonderful snails. That's why they're fun. All right, so those are our shapes. Remember, we're going to do them before every project because it just makes it easier for us to draw. I'm going to go ahead and um, put my paper in the horizontal position. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to teach you how to do this hummingbird today and these flowers. But remember, there's lots of ways to do a hummingbird. And of course, there's lots of different positions that the hummingbird, hummingbird's wings are in. So I hope that after I do the one, maybe we'll do another one together, or um, you will at home. So think about what you want your picture to look like. How many hummingbirds do I want in my picture? Where do I want it? Where do I want my flowers? Remember, that's your composition. All right, we're going to get started. I'm going to start with his eye. It's a little eye because it's a little hummingbird. So here I go with just a little circle. Not really going to put a dot in it. I'm just going to make it a little darker around here at the bottom. Again, my Sharpie's pretty thick, so it's hard to get really fine lines. And remember, it is a little guy. The top of the head is um, a slightly curved line starting right here kind of straight, and then curves over your hummingbird's head. Then we're going to put a sideways half circle, very teeny. So that means that's the way I know that that's where my beak's going to go into, or it's going to start from. So again, you decide which angle your beak is going to go straight out, angled a little bit down, making a diagonal line. It's up to you, boys and girls. 
I'm going to start. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to go out. Wherever I think it's long enough, I'm going to make just a little bitty curve down. Not too much. And I'm going to go back to my um, sideways, um, sideways curve line. Touch the end of it. And I might curve up a little bit because I really want that slenderness. Remember, it gets smaller as it gets towards the end. I probably put a line in the middle. If I do that, you might not see. Um, now let's try. Let's see if I can go really lightly with this. There we go. So that would be my middle line if you want to put it in. Next thing we're going to do is below the um, the beak right here we're going to touch and we're going to go in with our slightly curved line and stop and go back up here and maybe I'm going to tuck this in just a little bit more and I'm going to touch right here slightly curved line very slight boys and girls okay you don't really want too much of a hump so this is um, the back side of them. This is my front side of them. Because I don't have this wing in first, I'm going to do this back wing, but I'm not going to complete the whole thing. I'm just going to start with its slightly curved line up. All right, so that's it. But I'm not going to bring it back down until I do this wing. So now I'm going to come back into the body. Make a little slightly curved line right there. I'm going to touch it and make a um, line going out, angling out just a little bit. And I'm going to do this top line. You decide how long the wing is going to be. Notice that the wing is longer here and shorter here. So you have a nice diagonal line that closes it up. So I'm going to go back here and instead of going just straight out, I'm going to angle down a little bit. So that's the shape of my wing. And now remember I said I'm going to close this in. So I'm gonna, maybe I'm going to make this a little longer so it really shows that this is longer than this side. And then I'm just going to make little U's. To connect that. And then here I'm going to do a couple more little U's across has a little section here, it has a different color, and then you have your feathers, the lines that come out of there. So now that we have this, I now can bring this um, wing down, all right? So same thing, I'm gonna make it um, shorter here, longer there. So here, I'm gonna do a diagonal, right? I'm going to put some lines in it. Okay. So now I have the wings. To continue the body, we have to say, excuse me right here, right? We're going to continue it, though. We're going to say, oh, let's talk a little bit about that. Mine right now is not flying. If it was flying, the body would go straight out. So I would continue my body going this way. But remember, I said my, my hummingbird is having... Um, a little drink here from the flower. So he's hovering like a helicopter. So his body is down. So therefore, I'm going to change my directions. I'm not going to come straight out. I'm going to come down. So I'm going to say, excuse me here. Hop over. This is the direction I'm going in. There I go with the rest of the body. I need to come back to my tummy. Very slightly curve out. Again, I'm getting want to get a little thinner here. Another curved line to get thinner. Once I'm thin enough, then I can put in my tail. Just just some long um, U's or V's, whatever you want to do. So this tail. So um, oh, and if you like this little um, division. I just did some use right here. Again, so you can just color it in a different way and you know that that's more the, the back side of them. This is the front side of them. So um, 
I said I'm going to teach you how to do a flower. Remember, there's many ways to do flowers. You can do any flower you want. Do think about the flowers that hummingbirds are attracted to. The reason they have such a nice long beak is so that they can go into those flowers. So think about the flowers that you're doing. If you want to do one of my flowers, I'm going to start with a slightly curved line. At the end of that slightly curved line, I'm going to put um, like a raindrop or an oval. Doesn't really matter what shape. It's round. I'm going to touch um, one side of it. I'm going to curve out with a slightly curved line. And I'm going to make a sideways U right there because I'm going to come back in with a lazy S. I'm going to come in and then out and then end in this U right here. Okay, so here's my lazy S, right? I'm going to come in, come out, and, and like that. Probably make a butterfly this way too. So the other side, same thing. You don't have to do exactly the same way. Sometimes it's better if you do it a little differently. So that's the base of my flower. And then his petals back here. Or and if you really want him in, we could make the petals behind. So he really looks like he's going inside there. I didn't do it here, but if you like it better where it looks like he's going inside to get the nectar, you can. If you like the way it's done there, either way is fine. Now we need some leaves. The way I did the leaves, you can do them any way you want, but I did... First I did a lazy S for one side and then a slightly curved line for the other to close it in and then a curved line for the middle. So let's do another one. Lazy S and a slightly curved line to close it in, slightly curved line for the middle. If you'd like to put some more veins in there, you may. If you want some more leaves, you can. If you want some more flowers, let's do one more flower. I'll do another one here, slightly curved line or a lazy S for your middle. Like I said, a teardrop or an oval. Touch one side, come out with a curve. When it's long enough, curve back and give me your lazy S. Okay, good. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Right? And then your petals in here. And then, of course, some leaves. Slightly curved line, lazy S, slightly curved line. Lazy S, slightly curved line, slightly curved line. Maybe I'll do one more leaf. I think here overlapping. All right, so we have our hummingbird. We have him um, having some fun with some flowers. Can certainly make your stems coming down. Make some grass over here. Think of what kind of scene you want to make. Uh, mine is definitely outside. Think of other things that you can put outside here. If you'd like some other hummingbirds, remember the hummingbird itself starts the same way but it's the it's the um wings that are different depending on the flight okay so you can look at these boys and girls if you'd like you can do some um different hummingbirds with the wings in a different position or you can just do another one like this or you could um just make another background put some birds in the background you know i love that Certainly can put a sun over here. We can put some rocks down here. And maybe have, uh, oh, I love my little ladybug. So maybe a little ladybug there. It's crawling on the rock. Um, I want you to use your imagination. So I want you to finish up the picture. Tell me a story about your hummingbird or hummingbirds and uh, where he is. 
So I hope you had a fun um, time doing this with me today, boys and girls. I hope you color it in really colorful. Look online if you don't have a lot of hummingbirds around to see uh, how beautifully colored they are. And uh, really have some fun. Hope I see you soon.